I'm, uh, I'm afraid driving. It's about two miles, but it's two miles that's full of cops and other cars and everything else, and uh, if I get stopped, I'd have to explain, and there's no telling what would happen. Um, I just don't feel like I'm safe until I'm in the doors. I had a friend who was robbed outside the club the other day, um, and there's police that are always there. The one in the parking lot, one at the door, and between both of them, somehow he got robbed, and I know I'm <laughs> partially feeds into the culture of what being a woman is, that I'm on heels, and I'm in hose and I can't run or really defend myself uh, in this way because I'm really impaired um, just by nature of the physical clothing that I have on and um, if something were to happen I wouldn't be in my capacity as a powerful societal being a white male to defend myself in any way and so until I'm in the club sitting down um, I don't feel safe My name is Justin. I live in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm originally from a really small town in central Alabama. It's a town of about 400, so Jackson's the biggest place I've ever lived. Growing up in the South, you learn um, the behavior codes that are expected of the South. Um, I've found it to be even more alive in the societies I've been around in Mississippi than in Alabama, but there's still um, girls who have, who go to coming out balls and it's a little different than the coming out that I did. Um, there's this <laughs> cotillion and um, all of those things that are the vestiges of a very old culture um, and the South's culture is very important to it and so it must be respected and it must be held up um, the standard must be held. Being queer is a challenge to the established order, to a very deeply held order. People see homosexuality as just about sex very often, um, and sex is not something that we talk about. So in that, in that case, people are upset or shocked necessarily by a queer person. I'm really nervous even right now doing this video in or out of face, I guess, in boy face as um, as I know I will be. If someone who knew me saw this, they would know who I was and would recognize me and know I was talking about being gay and being a drag and gender performance as it were. Um, and that's something that's scary to me uh, because I'm out to my immediate family, I'm out to most of my friends, but there are a lot of friends that I know I would, or I assume, I would lose, and family that don't know, and I don't know their reaction, and it's <laughs> another thing I think is inherent in the queer experience is that you, through no fault of your own, are at a high risk of being alienated, or ostracized, or hurt by people you love for something you didn't choose, something you didn't select. Um, as a queer person, especially a queer person who knows they're queer from a young age, there's a lot of performance that you do to um, sidestep that question or um, just get around it in, in a certain way. And I'm going to steal this word a little bit, but you do have to pass. You have to pass as a straight person if you're pretending to be a straight person. Um, and that necessarily requires certain mannerisms, certain clothing, certain tropes and ideas that you at least show that you hold to be true. Once you see how flimsy the concept of gender via presentation really is, um, like if, if I can put on a skirt and that confuses you, that's that really just shows how flimsy the concept is and not how depraved I am. Being a man doesn't mean that you work in the mines every day, and you may, and there are gay people that really fit that heteronormative masculinity stereotype, but I'm not one of them, and I don't really care to be uh, anymore. That's not always easy, but you, 
You pick to be what you want to be or you pick to be what society wants you to be. And you have to be happy either way. In my nascent homosexuality, <laughs> as it were, um, there are a lot of women that I really looked up to. And there, there have been women in my life that I've looked up to all my life. Um, my mom, especially my grandparents, my great-grandparents, um, who I got to know and all were such characters. There's nothing in the world like a Southern woman, um, a Southern lady. They're amazing because they, they have the unique ability to steer a ship without the captain knowing that they're steering it. And I think that's quite amazing that they can take the systems that they're bound by and work in, through, and around them to accomplish what they need to accomplish. There's nothing like a Southern woman. My friends and I were talking about it one time just around the brunch table that um, how we didn't really want to stay in Mississippi, any of us, although we had gone to school here and most of us were from here. And uh, it just kind of came out of my mouth without any without any forethought. And I said, um, I don't want to live here, but I want to die here. And I think that's a pretty common sentiment that red clay runs through my veins. So this is my home and it will always be my home and always be a place that I love. And I have always come back to it through all the traveling that I've done. I've always come back and as flawed as she is.